I'm going to open up tonight with uh, a question that the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. They were at the temple and they said, Lord, look at these beautiful buildings. What are going to be some of the things that are going to happen right before you come back? How many of you believe Jesus is soon to return? Let me see your hands. And so what they're asking him is actually relevant to our day because I believe we are so close to the second coming of Jesus. One of the signs that Jesus points out that I want to really zero in on tonight is found in verse 10, 11, 12, and 13 of Matthew 24. So let's look at this. Jesus said, and then many, everybody say many. many. All right, the Greek word there, many, literally means majority. I want you to think this through, okay, as we read this. And then many will be offended. Everybody say offended. offended. Will betray one another and will hate one another. Now this is a progression. An offended person will eventually betray. And if a betrayal is not dealt with, it will ultimately lead to hatred. You say, John, where do you get that from? Proverbs chapter 18 verse 19 says this, a brother or sister offended is harder to win than a strong city. Now in the days of Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs, what did strong cities have around them? Walls, what were the walls built for? Protection. Those walls would keep out those people that you believe were against you and allow in those people that you believed were for you. Well, this is exactly what an offended person does. They begin to build walls. Now, they're not physical walls, they're actually walls that are developed in our soul. The New Testament doesn't call them walls, The New Testament calls them strongholds. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses three, four, and five says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. How many of you know we are in a battleground, not a playground? He goes on to say, for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly or carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, what are those strongholds? He goes on to list them. Casting down every imagination. Now, a better rendition of that would be reasoning. Casting down every reasoning. Everybody point your finger to your head and say reasoning. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, point to your finger to your head and say knowledge, and bringing every thought, say thought, and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So what are these strongholds or walls. They are thought processes or reasonings that we develop deep within our soul that are contrary to the word of God. Now, how many of you know God's nature is to love? Matter of fact, he doesn't have love, he is love. He's the very essence of it. And the love of God always seeks to give, to give, to give. Somebody who has been hurt now says, I don't want to get hurt again. So they begin to build deep reasonings, protection mechanisms in their thoughts that protect them. So their focus shifts from give, give, give to protect, protect, protect. Now that makes us a perfect candidate for betrayal. Now, a lot of Christians do not understand what betrayal is. When they hear the word betrayal, they go to the extreme case. Benedict Arnold, Judas. A betrayal is simply this. When I seek my benefit or my protection at the expense of when I have a relationship with. So if I'm offended, I'm hurt, and now my thoughts are protect, if push comes to shove, I will protect myself even at the expense of somebody I have a relationship with. A betrayal is an ultimate abandonment of a relationship. And if it is not dealt with, it will ultimately lead into hatred. Now, a lot of people don't understand hatred. They associate hatred with anger, harsh feelings. No, there can be no anger at all. The Bible says that Absalom hated Ammon, therefore he neither spoke good nor evil to him. The word hate in the Greek literally means this, loveless. It is a vacuum void of any kind of love. So there can be no emotions attached to it. 
So what Jesus is saying in these last days is that the majority are gonna be offended. The offenses are gonna lead to betrayals and the betrayals are gonna lead to hatred. And then he says in verse 11, he said, and then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Everybody say many. Many. Who are the many that these false prophets are gonna deceive? The many that are offended. Now that tells me something right there, that Jesus is showing us that an offended heart is the breeding ground of deception. 